What's up, webheads? <clears throat> We're back again with the crazy story. It's me, Steven, my brother here. My name is D'Amico. All right. That- <laughs> That's him. That's my brother. Your co our co host, DeMarco. I threw you off with that. <laughs> Completely threw me off. <laughs> Let's get it started. Hello, hello, So what the hell have you been up to this week? Uh, what what week is it? What I've been doing? Last time I seen you mm-hmm. was not last weekend. It was last weekend. Was it? Yeah. That's how much you've been smoking this week. Damn. It's been a week since <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta slow down, man. Yeah, I've been hitting hard this week. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of that. Yeah. And then been just trying to play some Pokemon every night. You know, get an hour in there or something just to... Yeah. I haven't played much this week. Yeah. I kind of stopped just because I was... I don't know. I was just playing and then I was like, what am I doing right mm-hmm. now? I, yeah. I was like, I don't want to do the main quest right now. And I was just doing those uh, the side quests. So mm-hmm. I was like, eh, I don't need to play. Yeah. I keep getting... Every time I play, I keep getting jumped by like Pokemon like two at a time. <laughs> They're so aggressive. Yeah. I'm just walking by. Like even like the unaggressive, like the un, like unassuming ones. Like, I was just walking through, and then, like, there's, like, a beauty fly yeah. just sitting there. I'm like, okay. All of a sudden, you run past, it's like, hey, yeah. get out of my space. <laughs> it's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> like, chill out. I'm just, I'm going over here. I have nothing to do with you. <laughs> Those in the, the Paris. Oh, Paris. I'll just throw my, my bird Pokemon out right when I see it. Yeah. Just, like, take care of all of them. They Those things will chase you down for hella long. I was, what was a... Uh, yeah, I was doing something, and the Paris sect was there. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that two of them popped up. And all of a sudden, you know, when they do, like, the acid move or the poison move, yeah. you hear the sound. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I start running, and then it's, like, coming down. Like, they both did it, so it was, like, six different drops of it. Man, like, I, w- I fought a-, a Paris one time. I ran up on the Paris. I wanted to fight this guy. <laughs> and then I didn't see that a Paris sect had run up behind me. <laughs> And then I was I I threw out my first move. I I shot it. I it still had a little bit of juice left on it. So I was like, all right, he's gonna hit me with some poison here. And then he goes and I think, all right, cool, I got him. And then the paras there's a parasite behind me, he hits me with some poison. And like it doesn't it seems like it doesn't matter how what level your Pokemon are on. Mm-hmm. If they're within like ten levels of your Pokemon, they're gonna kill you. Yeah, they're so strong. It's so it's nuts. Like I was <laughs> I was playing uh Diamond and Pearl and like I was just going through like through Pokemon like paper. Yeah. But this one it's like I got I got a move I think is gonna be good and it's yeah. like nope, just a little bit no, less. Yeah, it's like you play like Sword and Shield or Brilliant Diamond or whatever and then like my Pokemon's maybe at like five levels higher yeah. than theirs. Oh, I got this. Yeah. No problem. All of a sudden I'm like ten levels above some of these Pokemon, and it's like I don't know if I'm gonna make it out of this alive. Like some of my Pokemon would be like knocked out in one hit. Yeah, I'm just like, all right, they're done for <laughs> for this journey. I was like, all right, well, <laughs> I, I don't know even... if it's me or if it's just. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm not gonna run all the way back and go get some of our potions, so or no revive. So whatever. I got no room for revives in my yeah. bag and everything. I, and yeah, every time I think I have more room in my bag. <laughs> I try to pick something up, and it's like, yeah, you don't have any room. Yeah, and you don't know what to drop. Yeah. So you're just stuck. Oh, that game is nuts. Yeah, I feel like I have to really dedicate uh, just like an afternoon or something just to kind of like really understand like how I'm going to go through it and not think like an old Pokemon game mm-hmm. and think like, okay, how am I supposed to go about doing it now? Yeah, they chase you down. like it's like it's They're like Karens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of my grass. <laughs> I hate it. I was also watching this one show this week called uh, Smiling Faces. Mm-hmm. It's on it's on Adult Swim, but you can watch it on HBO Max. Okay. Watching that while inebriated <laughs> was hilarious. It's such a weird <laughs> show because it's like they're different. They draw different characters in different styles. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, have you watched The Amazing World of Gumball? Yeah. It's sort of like that. Okay. And like there'll be like live action or claymation mm-hmm. or something like that. But it's about these two guys who work at this company that's only about trying to make you happy. Mm-hmm. And every episode they have a new client. And then like the clients are just like <laughs> the most <laughs> sad <laughs> people. <laughs> What's it called again? Uh, Smiling Faces. I got to check that out. Yeah. That one's good. I was watching some Robot Chicken. But yeah, I saw Jackass the other day on Sunday. Mm-hmm. That was really good. You would think like, damn, these guys are just should give it up, but yeah, it's actually it's super funny still. Yeah, I, I didn't. I assumed it would probably still be just as funny. Mm. But it's like, man, you guys have really put your bodies through a lot of shit for us. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> they don't get enough credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> like they really just beat each other up and like get beat up just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, like I think. Within the movie, there's, like, at least three instances of people getting, like, knocked unconscious. See? They've broken bones. People end up in, like, casts and wheelchairs for a little bit. Like, What have you been up to? Let's see. Well, Valentine's Day is coming up. So, um, because we have a child, it's a lot harder for <laughs> us to do something uh, when Valentine's Day falls during the week. Mm. So, we give each other and our stuff, like before or if it's nice if it falls if the weekend is closer or what are we talking about the valentine's day valentine's day monday falls on monday we try to do stuff the weekend before if it falls towards thursday friday then we'll try to do it the weekend after uh so we gave each other our gifts this weekend and uh ferio got me the lego uh infinity gauntlet nice yeah but i I have to wait till Zara goes to sleep for me to like try putting it together, because I already know she'll steal a piece and I'll be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yesterday I almost burnt my house down. Oh, fun! Yeah, you sound I, excited about that. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice surprise. <laughs> What'd you we, because we we get HelloFresh, right? Mm-hmm. I use code Webheads on HelloFresh <laughs> for fifteen percent off and a free box. Um, so I. I because we get six meals for the week, right? But sometimes we'll uh, we'll get home after one of the days of work and then just realize, like, I don't want to... Even though all the stuff is here, I don't want to cook. Mm-hmm. So we'll order something. But then we have an extra meal. And I knew that that was going to happen this week, so I had made one for lunch yesterday. It was burgers and potato wedges. So I made the burgers, and the wedges weren't done when I was eating the burger so i was like whatever i'll just leave him in there for like another 10 minutes and then we decided to cut zara's hair and then we had to me and her uncle were working on ferial's car yesterday and he texted us and said oh i'll be there in like 15 minutes so then we go and i never turned off the oven (laughs) and then we didn't come back for like four hours jeez and then (laughs) i i I was getting zara out of the car and then ferial walked in the house and she walked back out. She's like, you left the oven on. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then she, but she didn't open it. She didn't realize that there was stuff in the oven. Mm. And then she went upstairs. Uh, she was showering again and getting Zara uh, showered up again. And then I opened up the oven. Those potatoes were just black as ever. <laughs> the black, you know that, that new black that they just came mm. out with? The blackest black ever? They had to be that color. I was like, how did this not burn the whole place down? You ever notice when you do something wrong, you, like, in that instance, I don't know about you, but, like, if someone would have said, you left the oven on, I would have ran inside the house Mm -hmm. and been like, oh, shit. Like, even though it's not going to fix anything, like, I was already gone for four hours. Me running inside now is not going to change anything. (laughs) Yeah, these last three seconds are crucial (laughs) to to everything that's been happening right now. I'll fix this issue right now. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> you you go in and check. That's all. That's all I did. <laughs> that's literally all I did. And then when I when she went upstairs, I took it out of the oven and then threw it away. Throw it over the neighbor's face. Yeah. But even then, I was scared to throw the because the foil was super hot. And you know how foil doesn't really get hot. Yeah. Like this foil was like blazing hot. <laughs> so I like <laughs> took it outside. I like sprayed a little water on it with the hose <laughs> just to be safe. <laughs> I didn't want to throw it in the garbage can. Then the garbage can goes up in flames. So I was like, all right, let me just water this down a little bit. Oh, man, that was... I, I'm surprised the fire didn't start. But, I mean, there was I mean, only... Thank God. 
Yeah. I, I'm assuming it's because there wasn't much on there in the yeah. first place. Like, it was, like, five little, like, small-ass potatoes that were, like, the size of a golf ball. So, it wasn't much. I couldn't even fill up the whole tray with what I had. Yeah, that was that was my weekend. I almost burned down our house. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Me too. Because I don't have room to, to house you. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. I don't. I couldn't put Zara on anybody because she's a lot <laughs> in the afternoons. But let's see. What this week? We're just gonna jump right into it. All right. We got a lot to talk about today. Today we're doing the Dark Phoenix saga. Is this is this our first like X Men yes. crossover? Wow. Yeah. They've. I don't think they've popped up in anything that we've done so far. Yeah, I don't remember reading any Wolverine or. Yeah, all the way in season two, this is the first X Men. Damn, that's crazy. Well, we're forty years in. Yeah, this is uh, what we're doing today. Seventy eight, so about forty, like thirty nine years. Yeah, almost forty years in. And this is our first X Men. Like the event. first major thing. Yeah. Granted, this is uh, it's only a hundred and twenty issues in to their run, but still, that's almost damn. If they're doing one a month, it's almost like twelve years. Yeah. Damn, that's a lot. Some of these... Captain America was like 200 when we did that a couple of weeks ago. Damn. <laughs> when you really think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit went on for a long time. So, yeah, we're doing the Dark Phoenix saga today. Some of you may have uh, seen the movie, the mm-hmm. X-Men movie. Both. Oh, yeah, they did too. So, yeah, we're going to get right into it. Let's do it. All right, so just a little idea of how gene gray became the phoenix in the first place uh well gene and this is before our story starts uh, when gene and scott who is cyclops are having a romantic evening in manhattan she wolverine and banshee are abducted by sentinels now they're taken to an abandoned shield orbital platform under the command of the anti-mutant activist steve lang I don't think I've ever heard of him before. And his plan is to uh, unleash a new generation of Sentinels and the other X-Men who are on the team uh, with the aid of Dr. Peter Corbeau uh, end up rescuing them. Uh, During the space station's destruction, the X-Men find that their shuttle has been damaged in an earlier fight with the Sentinels. The X-Men decide that someone must stay at the controls and pilot the ship while everyone else remains in the shuttle's heavily shielded life cell. Knowing no one else could survive long enough to pilot the shuttle to safety, Jean uses her uh, telepathy on Dr. Corbeau to learn how to pilot the shuttle and her telekinesis to block the radiation as a pilot ship, as a, as she pilots the ship back to Earth. Her telekinetic shields give way under uh, the onslaught of the intense radiation. The strain holding their solar radiation at bay with her powers destroys the psychic shields Xavier placed in mind in her mind as a child. And Jean assumes her ultimate potential as a psychic, becoming an entity of pure thought. The shuttle crashes into the bay. Jean telekinetically reforms her body and emerges from the water, taking the code name of the Phoenix. I'm really impressed that you said all that from memory. If you, you guys, he was sitting here just like, it's like his uh, eyes rolled back in his head and he just like said it from memory. It was really impressed. But okay, we know yeah. what she, how she became the Phoenix. And so now we're going to learn about the Dark Phoenix. Yes. So she's, at this point, she's been living with the Phoenix powers um, for the last couple of years. So she's still Jean. She's still Jean, but she... But she has that. Uh, she has, so far because she has the love and enjoy in her life she's been able to completely control the phoenix power and she's used it for good to help save uh the shiar people because what her name is uh the leader of the shiar people is leandra or lalandra um and her brother was um at one point ready to destroy all the shiar people and Jean Grey and the rest of the X-Men were the ones that saved all of their people, mm. including uh, Professor X, who's kind of a, a dick in the story. Uh, that's I, I, actually, I don't get into much of why he's a dick in the story. He disappeared after, the, after she became the Phoenix and mm. started doing his own thing. <laughs> and then right when the story starts, he comes back. 
and he's not okay with not really being taken seriously as a leader anymore. <laughs> when you think of it, like, him as a leader of the X-Men, mm-hmm. do they really need him as a leader? Like, he's never in the field. He, no. he doesn't really provide anything that anyone else can't provide. No, like, throughout this story, he gets mad at Cyclops because Cyclops has been making the, all the decisions since he's been gone. He's been the leader. And then now he gets, in the story, he ends up getting mad at Cyclops at certain times because Cyclops is making decisions for the team and he didn't run it past Professor X before he said it. And it's like just, Andy when he went to the Bahamas and came back. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you've been gone. We've had to figure this whole thing out. So we start off with uh, X-Men 129. So we see, we start off in Ireland. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, Moira, mm-hmm. Moira McTaggart. <laughs> yeah. If you guys saw the animated series, she was uh, she was on there for like four or five episodes too. Yeah. So we're in Ireland in a battle that they just had with uh, Proteus or Proteus, her son. Yeah. Uh, her son is now dead, and so is her husband. And um, cheap Christmas for her. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So after that battle, uh, Banshee, who's a part of the X-Men, decides that he no longer wants... He decides that he's no longer useful as a teammate to the X-Men, so he's going to stay with Moira and help her through her grief. Cyclops starts asking around (laughs) the rest of the people that are there and see if anyone wants to replace Banshee. Uh, So who else is there? Mad Rock's the multiple man. He says no. Wait, where? They're in Ireland? Yeah, and he's just asking people. If they well, they were, the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were helping out in the fight, but yeah. <laughs> so Mad Rock's the multiple man says no. Havoc and Polaris say no. So they just X Men just say all right, whatever. We just we're down in person. <laughs> so they hop on the Blackbird, which is their ship, um, and they go home. End of story. <laughs> uh, but the team is just relaxing on the way back to Xavier's school for gift. For, for, was it for gifted youngsters? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, his team is made of adults. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are gifted is a, a subjective term, <laughs> and yeah, so the they're all just relaxed and chilling. This ends up being the calm before the storm. Uh, Colossus is wondering. So basically, in that battle, Colossus was the one who killed Proteus, mm. and now he's on the sh- Colossus is on the ship, wondering if killing him was the right thing to do. Even though killing him saved Moira's life. So he's dealing with this, this struggle of that. So we, and then we cut to, from there, we cut to a man named Jason Wingard. And he's smoking a blunt. And, <laughs> <laughs> and this evil man has been spending the last few months entering uh, Jean's mind. Manipulating her into thinking negative thoughts. Into thinking the most negative thoughts that she possibly could. So back on the Blackbird, for some reason... Out of nowhere, Jean is just mentally transported 200 years back in time. Out of nowhere. And then standing next to her is that guy, the same guy, Jason Wingard. In this little vision that she's in, Jason is her love interest. Physically, she sees him. Mm. Everything is normal. She's with it, but in her head, it's not making sense to her. She's like She knows that she was just on the ship, and now she's here. But when she sees Jason Wingard, she's like, oh, my soon-to-be husband... All this stuff. So it's not making sense for her. Uh, But after using her telepathic powers to realize... uh, After using her telepathic powers, she realizes that somehow this isn't actually her reality. And she doesn't know what's causing it. And in all of the the previous times that this happened to her, she thought that Proteus was the one that was causing this to happen to her. Which it wasn't. So she slips back in... Out of nowhere, she slips back in the present time. And then Cyclops is checking on her. And then telling, and he's saying, uh, ever since she, I guess I didn't explain this part either. At one point, using the Phoenix Force, she had died before this story. She was brought back to life by the Phoenix Force. This, she she died a, twice? So she died when she first got the, when she, she crashed died, the, in the shuttle? Yeah. And then she died again after? And she died again after. But the Phoenix Force... uh, I I don't know if she technically died because she had the Phoenix Force in her. Mm -hmm. And you'll... Later on in the story, you'll see... You'll understand why she probably didn't die with the Phoenix Force. But he's saying that ever since she was believed to be dead, 
which happened in uh, issue 113. Uh, he's done some soul searching and he realized how much he always loved her from the beginning. And then when the blackbird lands back at the school, they get readings that there's an intruder inside. And then they rush in and who's there? Professor X at his school for gifted youngsters. <laughs> so <laughs> some of them are cool, excited. Hey, welcome back. And then some of them are just like, all right, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Whatever. So the next morning, Professor already has a, half the team training in uh, the simulation. The thing. danger room. Yeah. Uh, he just has them going hard in there. There's like nonstop. And then, but the team, <laughs> most of the team at this point is pissed off because he's treating them like they don't know what they're doing. Like they're still actual youngsters and they need the training. And Scott tells them like, yeah, you got to chill out. You, this isn't your team anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then Professor X is like, listen, buddy, I started all this. You're weak. You're a horrible <laughs> leader. I know what I'm doing. So it's, it's just this battle going back and forth. This is almost like when Captain America and Iron Man were just going back and forth last week. <laughs> so Xavier gets alerted by Cerebro that they found two new mutants out in the world. So then we cut to Jason Wingard and we see that he's a part of this club called the Hellfire Club. And they're talking about how they have to, how they have complete control over Cerebro and that uh, they're going to reach out to the mutants that were just found and try to recruit them before he, before Xavier and his team get there. So we cut to Chicago where we see a young Kitty Pride uh, walking into her home where her parents are there talking to uh, a Miss Frost, Emma Frost, for those uh, who might know who she is. She's also a telepath. Mm-hmm. Um, and she can turn her form into diamond. Yeah. Well, she gets to it. She goes by the White Queen? Yes. So she's in there talking to Kitty's parents, and right when Emma's leaving, uh, that's when Xavier and his boys show up to, for, to try to recruit Kitty. While that goes... Uh, well, that goes on. The recruitment with the parents goes on. Xavier tells Storm, Wolverine, and Colossus to take Kitty to go get some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as they're there, as soon as they get to the ice cream parlor, uh, they're attacked by Emma Frost and her goons. The goons get beaten up pretty quick. Uh, Emma ends up getting... She gets away, does her own thing. She's like, well, whatever. That's, <laughs> that's on the goons. <laughs> but she... Come, she ends up coming back and then actually beating Wolverine, Colossus, and Storm by herself. And then she captures them and takes them off. But Kitty gets away because she has this power where she can... Uh, I don't know if it's teleporting, but she can go through like walls and buildings. Phasing. Yeah. Phasing, yeah. So she gets away. But she follows Emma wherever they're taking the rest of the X-Men because she wants to help out. And I said I didn't know what the hell it was called. And then in my next note, it says she faced through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and then she follows, yeah, she follows Emma and the goons to the ship that they were on. And then she faces through that wall. And now she's trying to find where they're going to put her new friends. That was 129. 130, Cyclops, Jean, and Nightcrawler arrive in New York to try to find the other mutant. They pull up for some reason in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> I don't know where they got this kind of money from. And why are the X-Men getting paid like this and the Avengers are broke as shit? Beast left the, the X-Men to be on the Avengers and have $4 in his fucking It's about bag? helping people. It's not about the money to him. The yeah. X-Men are all money hungry. Man. I, for that Rolls Royce, I would have stayed. All those product placements they got to do. <laughs> oh, man. I can only imagine the product placements that they would have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they pull up at, at outside of this looks like this beat down warehouse in new york in a rolls royce but as soon as they hop out they get this feeling that they're being watched uh they go searching the building that they arrived at and it's housing this huge disco so gene and cyclops start searching the party for basically a needle in a haystack and nightcrawler has to stay outside on lookout duty uh, but none of them are aware that they're being watched by the hellfire club because it's a comic book. I don't know how they're doing it, but their Hellfire Club is watching them. Or is like, are they like in a room with like a TV and then... Yeah, and they're watching them on a screen and it's like, okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, so the Hellfire Club is watching them. 800 miles away, 
Emma Frost is uh, gloating basically to the Hellfire Club about how easily she captured the three X Men, and so <laughs> she went after she captured the three X Men in the ice cream parlor. She went back to Kitty's house and then captured Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> She just wills him out. Uh, you're coming with me. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm not done. I'm not done recruiting. And this is a lot easier with no wheels. <laughs> so, so, yeah, she kidnapped Xavier, too. And then we see that Kitty... So I had some trouble doing this part, because I was trying to figure out what the past tense of sneak was. And what do you think it is? Snuck? No. Is <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was, too. But it sneaked. Sneaked. And it, it sounds wrong saying sneaked to me. So she snuck? Nope. And so at this point, we see that cut. Or that We see that Kitty has sneaked into the Hellfire Club's hideout. What's present tense? Sneak. Uh, ooh. So past tense is sneaked. Present tense would be... Yes, I don't... Th- snuck would be the past tense of sneak. Right? Snuck. Past I'm going to sneak into the house. I snuck into the house. But it sneaked. It sne- the correct form of it is sneaked. <laughs> so I have to say that I sneaked into the house. Which kind of sounds correct, but it also sounds very wrong. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So we find out that Kitty has sneaked into the Hellfire Club, uh, their hideout. She's trying to figure out how she's going to get... Storm, Wolverine, and Colossus are all in cages, just hanging in the hideout. And she's trying to figure out how how am I going to get them out of here. She's just a kid. She has no idea. Like, are they unconscious? the The cages are making them like loopy, uh, so they can't use like their powers. I was about to say Wolverine has indestructible claws that can cut through anything. And Colossus is, is literally made of. Yeah, <laughs> like he metal. can turn he turns his body into metal, <laughs> and Storm can do. They they keep calling her a weather witch. <laughs> <laughs> Even her friends call her a weather witch. That sounds very bad. Yeah, yeah. It was so. Yeah, she's trying to figure out how to free the three of them. But she's spotted pretty quickly by the goons in the hideout. Mm-hmm. So she just runs away. She dives through the floor, getting away from the goons. And then Emma Frost wants the whole building on lockdown at that point. But it's what are you going to lock down if she can yeah, face through the door? <laughs> <laughs> so back at the disco Jean is still looking around for uh, the mutant that Cerebro found uh, when she runs into Jason Wingard in the party and the second they make eye contact she slips back in time again but uh, she doesn't fight it she just goes with it I can't fight this <laughs> feeling anymore and then they so now in this time slip these two are getting married and Jason introduces her as the Black Queen after the whole ceremony is done. Just as they they start to kiss, because now they're man and wife. Mm-hmm. Just as they start to kiss, she slips back into present time. And the kiss continues in while they're just standing in the disco. So now these two are just in present time kissing. So he's there in the disco. Yeah. But he's also in her mind. And they're kissing in both. And, Cy- and now Cyclops walks up while they're kissing. And he's just like, what the hell is this? Double the pleasure, double the fun. This girl came with me, and now it's done. <laughs> like, I don't, like, he's just like, what What the hell is this? Like, we came to find somebody, and now you're making out with some dude in a party? Yeah, you're kissing, you tried to spit with this guy. <laughs> you, you know where he's been? It's supposed to be my gal. Gene, how could you do this to me? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, Gene... Hasn't but Gene hasn't told anybody about these time slips that she's having. Mm. So he's even more confused seeing that his girl is kissing somebody in a disco. <laughs> Another thing that could just be fixed just by talking to people. <laughs> yeah, communication, guys. So she's like, "Oh, let me explain. Let me explain." He's like, "We'll talk about this later. We need to find the mutant that's here." So seconds later, the singer comes on stage uh, named Dazzler. Cyclops has like this, basically like an Apple Watch with Cerebro on it. <laughs> And <laughs> as soon as the Dazzler starts coming up on stage, the watch just starts going crazy. Uh, meanwhile, outside, Nightcrawler uh, gets a call on the Rolls Royce phone. <laughs> and, 
And it's Kitty calling saying that she and the X-Men need help, like, ASAP. And as Nightcrawler tries to figure out what's going on, he gets attacked by this juggernaut-looking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Who hits him with, like, these sonic waves, and it stuns him. And then uh, back in the disco, two more juggernaut-looking bitches attack Jean, Cyclops, and the Dazzler. Jean has the ability now with the Phoenix Force to just change their their regular clothes into their uniforms. Everybody's? Yeah, anybody. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then that's when uh, the Dazzler and the X-Men start getting the upper hand now that they have their uniforms on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> those are too restricting. <laughs> and then uh, the Dazzler is uh, one of her powers is the ability to transport them, uh, her and whoever she's with, um, around. So she transport them transports them to this cosmic, almost like a holding, like an astral plane, basically. But she transport she transports the the goons with them as well. So Jean. Just starts beating the crap out of him. <laughs> and that that just goes off. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> if you can transport away, why do you take the villains with you? <laughs> or why, why do you take the heroes with you? Just transport the villains away. Yeah. Or, like, you don't know any of these people from anybody else. <laughs> just, run. Just transport yourself <laughs> back home. Uh, I'll come back next week. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, Jean just turns, with her Phoenix Force turns the goons to just basically dust. Jeez, can you imagine going into work and yeah. like, hey, we need you to go get these these people. Here's your, get those, here's your assignment. Yeah. And then you go and you get just turned into dust. Man, dust. <laughs> literal dust. That would suck. <laughs> or if you get left in the astral plane, wherever she took them. <laughs> yeah, that was all, oh, man. How do I... And you just spend eternity trying to figure yeah. out how to get back home. <laughs> You don't age, you don't get older, nothing. You just stuck there. And then you finally find your way back home and everybody knows dead. Because you've been, been there for years. hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> so the Dazzler transports them out of that little astral plane. And they gather back up with Nightcrawler and they head out to Chicago. Chicago. And then, Chicago. But <laughs> they don't have the Blackbird, so they have to drive from New York to Chicago. <laughs> That's 800 miles. <laughs> it's like, what, a 12-hour drive? Yeah. In a Rolls Royce? In a Rolls Royce. <laughs> 800 miles. Definitely putting some miles on that thing. Yeah. You're not getting back what you think you are when you <laughs> trade that shit in. <laughs> so that was 130. 131, back in Chicago, Kitty is literally still running from Emma's goons at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and then she runs into an alley, and she's kind of stuck. And then they're chasing her in a car. So they're like, all right, just run her over. We don't care. <laughs> it's better to take her in dead than not at all. So they they gas it, and they're going <laughs> to run this girl over. And then right before they do, uh, Jean hops right in front of the car, flames on with her Phoenix powers, and the car hits her, and it just crashes like it ran into a brick wall. Why wouldn't Kitty just fade through the car? <laughs> I don't know. Her face through the wall. That she's I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? You got to give these heroes a chance to hero. At, at this point, did you mention that Kitty's only like thirteen? She yeah, she's young. I don't. I didn't mention it, but yeah, she's young. Yeah, she's like literally a kid. Young, young. She is a youngster. Yeah, she, she needs should to be, be at the at school. school. <laughs> Not like the rest of these nerds. <laughs> these all the X Men are at this point just like those kids that like graduated like a year or two ago and they just want to keep going back to seem cool these kids all these guys are billy madison all of them billy passed the third grade oh what a wonderful day we're, we're never gonna finish this. <laughs> so yeah the car uh crashes into gene as the phoenix uh nightcrawler takes kitty away to calm her down and cyclops finally shows up and he's pissed, and he's like, Gene, I told you to stop the car, not kill them. <laughs> like, you didn't have to do that. But she, like, with these Phoenix powers, she's getting, like, because she's been doing those time slips with Jason, he's putting all these negative thoughts into her head. She's starting to enjoy mm. killing stuff at this point. So two seconds after uh, Cyclops gets pissed off, two seconds later, 
Kitty sneaks away from Nightcrawler using her teleporting powers or phasing powers. And Jean has to use her telekinetic powers to go find her. Because now she's a 12-year-old lost in Chicago. And you know her parents are pissed off. <laughs> like, where did you guys take my kid? <laughs> this all happened within a day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> all of it. So when Jean finally finds her, she's hiding uh, behind some boxes in a warehouse crying. And then Jean takes her into her arms and says, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. We got you. Like, everything's fine. We're the X-Men. So now they're all back in the Blackbird. And Kitty is trying to explain how her, Colossus, Storm, and Wolverine got into the mess that they did. Cyclops has uh, Jean brain check some of the goons that ran into her. (laughs) So she can find out uh, where the rest of the team is. And she also sees while she's checking their brain that they're up against another telepath, which is Emma Frost and the rest of the Hellfire Club. She knows that the, she knows the Hellfire Club from her time slips that she's been having. And she also sees that Jason Wingard uh, in there. She sees Jason Wingard in the goon's mind. So she knows that he there's a chance he's a part of all this stuff. And then they decide that the best thing to do was to to disguise themselves and sneak into Emma's compound. <laughs> Everybody put these party hats on. <laughs> put the mustache on. <laughs> Jean, put the mustache on. <laughs> so after they arrive there, they let Kitty get out of the car first, and then she starts phasing through walls trying to get into the building. <laughs> and uh, they keep the rest of the gang basically tied up in the back seat. And Jean is using her telekinetic powers to control the goon to make it seem like he's still mm. alive. And he's talking to the other guards like, hey, look what I got. I got the X-Men. <laughs> like, tell Emma like to let me in so we can get this all done with. It doesn't go well. Like, <laughs> so, uh, But Kitty makes her way back into where uh, Colossus, Wolverine, and Storm are all locked up. And she sees that Storm's not there anymore, but... She goes straight to Wolverine and tries to let him out. She immediately gets shot because she's not quiet about, like, she's a young kid. She doesn't know, right? But she's not slick about, like, trying to, like, get to, like, where Wolverine and Colossus are to help them. So when she tries to help him out, she gets him out, but they're not quiet about any of it. So the goon turns around, sees what's happening, and just shoots her. (laughs) Like, open the, the door of the gate, and they're like, all right, we better close it, too. Go plonk. <laughs> That's basically what happened. But now that Wolverine is out and he's not loopy from the cage, he's like, you just shot this little girl? <laughs> he's like, nah, that's it. So he just goes in, like, instant kill mode and just starts killing everybody in there. So, But then we cut back to Cyclops and his team, and they're still sitting in the car waiting to be transported to Emma. And he decides this is taking too long. And he's going to enact his plan now. So he he basically he takes his glasses off. He blasts through the roof of the car. The Dazzler stuns the guards with like blinding light. So now they can't see anything. Yeah, she can throw like shiny lights, right? Yeah. And uh, they just burst through the front doors of the building to try to find their friends. Emma has not a care in the world that any of this is happening. <laughs> She's watching the whole thing. She's fine until all of a sudden Jean bursts through, through her door. And she's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> how'd you get here? <laughs> so Cyclops and the rest of the team run into Wolverine, Colossus, and Kitty. And then they start whooping ass. Back in Emma's office, Jean and Emma are going steady at each other. And it was like a 50-50 kind of thing. Like, no one was getting any headway on it. But that's only because Jean was letting Emma do whatever she could. Mm. Like, using her full force. So Jean can learn her strengths and weaknesses, and then uses it against her. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, she's badass in this. So, as she, yeah, as she gains the knowledge, the power of the Phoenix grows stronger and stronger, but Emma thinks that she has one last go in her. Uh, so, with just one last swing, with enough force to... She hits uh, Jean with enough force to just collapse the whole building. Now we can't see either one of them at this point. They're stuck under the rubble. Minutes later, after searching the rubble, Cyclops, the rest of the team, they're trying to find Jean. Jean just, like, casually just comes up with Emma in hand, just, like, knocked out. I'm not sure if she's dead or not, but she looks dead. (laughs) 
and she just drops her, and then they're like, all right, well. <laughs> <laughs> you show up at somebody's house, whoop their ass and all their friends, and then the house is destroyed, and you just like, all right. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just leave them there. Yeah, that was it. So, and then, she, yeah, she leaves, and they take off. And then the next day, the Dazzler just decides, hey, this isn't for me. She goes back home. <laughs> and then they return Kitty to her parents, and her parents are obviously pissed off. <laughs> just <laughs> leave her at the doorstep, ring, ring the doorbell, and run off. <laughs> Sorry. <They're laughs> Sorry, hiding. Mr. and Mrs. Pride. Xavier's hiding behind the bush. He's like, is he pissed? Is he mad? <laughs> Whoever dropped her off at the doorstep is like, go, go, go. Go, go, go. And there's, I can't get it in gear. <laughs> get, move. <laughs> the kind. <laughs> so the, the parents are obviously pissed off, but like the dad's like, like, where the hell have you guys had my daughter for the last 24 hours? We thought she was dead because the ice cream parlor is blown up. <laughs> <laughs> there is no more ice cream parlor. <laughs> And that was the place you told me you were taking my daughter. <laughs> we even had the cops like identify the bodies. <laughs> and we found out that it, she wasn't in there. So where the hell has she been? There's another little girl. <laughs> he's a decoy girl. <laughs> so like he's like pissed, like obviously. And then but Jean uses her powers to manipulate his mind into thinking that everything was fine. That's messed up. Yeah. And that because she did that. Cyclops is pissed um, because he sees that now she's using her powers um, on innocent people, mm. on people that don't need. He deserved to be pissed. That's just it is what it is. You guys took his 12 year old daughter. Just because you didn't want to deal with the consequences. Yeah. You and that was her reason. Mind. She's like, we just didn't, after what we've dealt with, we didn't need more stuff to, <laughs> to deal with. So I just changed it a little bit. So Cyclops is worried about how. Uh, like how she's changing with these powers now. Mm. So now we go to 132. We jump over to New Mexico, and the X Men have arrived at uh, Angel. You know him, mm-hmm. yeah, Angel. He's this nice, strong-looking dude with wings. <laughs> um, but he he left the team a while ago, and he lives in um, New Mexico. So they all get there. He walks up to Gene. He says hi, and then they give each other a full kiss on the mouth. What the fuck? Like and like, after they kiss each other, full lips, everything. They're doing like it. It's a, a sensual kiss, and then Angel's like, "Hey, like, hopefully Cyclops doesn't get pissed off seeing this." <laughs> right after he does it, and then his girlfriend's standing right behind him. Like, uh, Cyclops is probably the last person you gotta worry <laughs> about, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, god, god damn. <laughs> Hope, hope my best friend doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> Come on, babe. Let's go inside. <laughs> but, but, like, Cyclops never acknowledges the fact that that happened. <laughs> never. All, like, as soon as it's over with, like, he's like, hey, Angel, like, you think we could just, like, go somewhere and talk? And then he's like, yeah, sure. So Angel just picks him up and flies off to, like, <laughs> it, what looks like the Grand Canyon and just takes him to the top of a rock. And he's like, well, no one's going to hear us here. What's going on? <laughs> so when they stop, Cyclops says that he feels like someone is after them. And he goes through everything that's happened so far <laughs> that we've already talked about. And then he mentions something about the Hellfire Club. And then that's when Angel starts to look worried. Um, he says that him and his girlfriend are part of the Hellfire Club because he inherited all of his wealth and money from his parents when they died. And uh, they were a part of the Hellfire Club. But he knows it to be a respectable club. It just wasn't for him. That's why they never continued going on with it. They just keep talking after that. But they're both a little worried about what's going on. Out of nowhere, Jean just flies up to where they are. <laughs> and she's like, hey, like you guys got to hurry this up. You guys have been up here for hours <laughs> talking. <laughs> Warren was all just like, dang. He knows about that kiss. Yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're talking about the Hellfire Club. He just, like, he just, keeps, <laughs> just keeps talking to him about random stuff. He's like, yeah, man, like a Hellfire Club. It wasn't wasn't for me, but yeah. He's, and then Cyclops just starts more sentences. He's like, yeah, I got more. 
<laughs> Angel's just like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> He's like, I, I'm not a part of them, but I'm pretty sure they're cool people. They probably wouldn't do anything <laughs> to hurt you. Cool. Me and the girlfriend that I love so much, me and her went, but it just wasn't our vibe. But they seemed cool. Like, But I, I love her a lot, so... <laughs> <laughs> if she wants to go back again, then maybe I'll just do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, Jean's like, you guys have been up here for hours. And Angel is like, well, that seems like it's my cue. So let me get out of here. <laughs> and so Jean sits on top of the rock with Cyclops. And then they just have like a nice little chill session. They're just up there. She transforms her uniform into a bikini and just starts suntanning up there. And then these two start making out, and then we cut away from that. <laughs> we all know what happens after. Yeah. So sometime later, at about a week later, uh, we see Wolverine and Nightcrawler moving through the sewer, making their way to uh, wherever the Hellfire Club is. Uh, they're having a party in New York. Uh, so these two are going from under. And <laughs> Cyclops and the rest of the gang are in a limo around the corner from the party in their best civilian costumes, ready to join the party. Because they got uh, invites from uh, Angel. So after entering the party, we see the heathens of the Hellfire Club plotting their next move to turn Jean Grey the Phoenix against the X-Men. I mean, I feel like they would know. You're giving invites to someone who was an X-Men before. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't seem... Well, they were using fake names and costumes, (laughs) so how could you tell? (laughs) <laughs> so yeah the the hellfire club is uh at, so there's the hellfire club and then there's what they're calling the inner circle which is jason wingard and a few other people which i'll get to in a bit but the inner circle is the part of the hellfire club that's trying to turn um gene gray against x the rest of the x-men is the entire hellfire club is it only for mutants or is it it's not for... It's just for regular people. It's just the inner circle. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So they're working to chain, or to turn her against the, the rest of her team. Jason Wingard joins the festivities of the party and he steps in to dance with Jean um, because he just saw her walk in and he knows who that is. Her jig is up, everybody. Her civvies are not covering up <laughs> the fact that that is her. So he steps in to... <laughs> Gene and Cyclops are dancing in the party, and Jason is just like, hey, let me step in. And he just, he literally just steps in and starts dancing with her. <laughs> and um, she time slips again. So now Cyclops watches as this girl just gets whisked away <laughs> by Jason. To, he just takes her to a room upstairs. And Cyclops is like, uh, <laughs> nah, you got you got to have some sort of nah, that. You got to fight. You got to have a point. line somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> you got to. Nah, you're not just gonna whisk my girl away like that, <laughs> and just take her upstairs. And you're just like, man, hmm. <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem right. You either get in there and join, or you stop that shit. <laughs> Yeah, two options, bud. <laughs> two options. <laughs> but uh, one of those options is not you just standing there watching them. So, yeah, they go upstairs. After He does end up chasing them, but when he gets close enough, um, he finds out that uh, Jason Wingard is actually the villain mastermind. So uh, what happened was when Jason took Gene up to uh, the library where the rest of the Hellfire team was, he... Uh, he relaxed for a second. He got her in thinking that he had a chance to just relax and give up the illusion. But when he did that, and that's right when Cyclops had run up on him. And he was like, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on. But at that point, he's already uh, too late to stop anything because uh, Mastermind has now changed uh, Jean Grey the Phoenix into the dark side. And he blasted Cyclops away. So Cyclops is now beat down down the hallway. <laughs> His girlfriend's now on the dark side, and yeah, uh, they run towards a man named Sebastian Shaw of the Hellfire Club, and he beats the ever loving crap out of everybody <laughs> on the team. Nuts, Colossus, Wolverine, uh, not Wolverine yet. Colossus, Storm, Nightcrawler isn't there yet, but he beats the crap out of them. Like, wouldn't no, it's not even like a fair fight. <laughs> the Colossus had no chance. Under the building, Wolverine and Nightcrawler just entered, and they are attacked by uh, 
this cyborg uh, named Donald Pierce. And then they're beat down badly. Like mid-2000 Raiders bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Storm gets caught by somebody else. And then she catches the beating of a lifetime. So all of the X-Men are just in really bad shape at this point. So far, they don't seem <laughs> very capable of handling they're not a good anything. Team. No, they're really not. This is probably why Professor X was so pissed off all the time. <laughs> so after they're done, uh, the Hellfire Boys and the Dark Phoenix get together and have drinks to celebrate the win. Why not? That was 132, 133. Uh, the only the only X-Men left is Wolverine because of his healing powers. Or his healing factor. Uh, he makes his way back into the building and then he starts kicking ass. <laughs> He's just doing everything on his own. Back in the library where the Hellfire crew is uh, hanging out. And the X-Men they captured are just rendered completely useless at this point. Can't do a damn thing up there. So uh, now I have a quick explanation of the inner circle. We have Jean, who's now the Black Queen. Uh, Jason Wingard, who is Mastermind. Sebastian Shaw is a mutant. Uh, Leland is also a mutant. And this guy Pierce is a cyborg. So <laughs> gives us... he gives us nothing. <laughs> But at least their names are going to come up. So I figured you guys, it might make sense. It probably won't though. <laughs> so we find that uh, Gene has been slipping uh, in time uh, because of the mastermind. And all of it has just been illusions the whole time. She hasn't actually been slipping in time. He's just been doing that to trick her into thinking that. So she sees all of the X-Men at this point. They're in the vision, but she sees them all as like normal people. But because she's 200 years back in time, she's in that uh, that slave era. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she sees Storm in front of her. And she says some things that <laughs> aren't friendly to, <laughs> to people that look like Storm in that time. <laughs> and I, I didn't write them in my notes because I felt bad seeing it. <laughs> but it gets pretty offensive. So, yeah. But Cyclops is there she sees him as a normal person she doesn't know who he is at all but his next idea is to use this uh psychic connection that the two of them have gained with each other and um somehow he jumps into the astral plane on his own (laughs) and he he meets her in this world that she's living in he now he sees her the way that this illusion is showing her um, but it it doesn't change anything. He's <laughs> he's met by the Dark Phoenix with a lot of hostility, and Jason Wingard is there as well. And uh, they start sword fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and Wingard says, uh, if if Wingard wins this fight, then he severs the the last connection that Cyclops and Jean had with each other. And yeah, so they just keep fighting. Back on the dance floor. Inside the building, Wolverine gets in there, and he's jumped by more goons. It doesn't go well for them either. <laughs> and then back on the astral plane, Wingard wins the duel, and he stabs Cyclops in the stomach. And in real life, in real life, Cyclops is just standing there, like nothing's actually happened to him. But he collapses, and everyone there just thinks he's dead at this point. <laughs> that was one thirty-three, and then one thirty-four. Wolverine finally shows up at the library and Sebastian Shaw is pissed because he's like, he looks at the cyborg guy like, I thought you killed him. (laughs) You told me you killed him. So somehow, uh, Jean breaks free of the hold of Mastermind. Mastermind Jason Wingard. uh, She breaks free of the hold that he had on her and she's helping them all, the rest of that team, escape. Wolverine goes on to kill uh, Leland. Storm and Nightcrawler end up beating Sebastian Shaw. And then a few blocks away from the party, we see Hank McCoy, the Beast, sitting in Avengers Mansion uh, because he just wants to be a part of that team now. And the they the mansion gets a call from the NYPD saying that the X Men are like four blocks down, <laughs> causing like a rampage at this party. And then that was it. We don't see Beast again for a really long time. <laughs> at that point. So back at the party, uh, Colossus tears apart the cyborg, but he still somehow gets away because. Uh, comic books cyclops is running through the mansion just trying to get out of there and mastermind is still at it and all the party goers see 
mastermind caused an illusion, uh, an illusion on the party goers. So now, as they see Cyclops running towards them, he's not doing anything but running. But they see him shooting his lasers <laughs> at them, thinking that he's trying to kill all of them. So that's why the cops got called. <laughs> and he wasn't doing anything. So um, Mastermind runs into Jean while he's trying to get away. And she says, you've, you've made the biggest mistake of your life trying to like trick me doing all this stuff. And she sends, <laughs> she sends him hurtling through space. <laughs> through time and space, she sends this man hurtling. He screams. No one can hear him. He, he's running in place and can never stop anywhere. He never reaches whatever it is he's running towards. And he drowns over and over <laughs> constantly. And she's like, he's like, please don't. Like, before she sent him, she was like, please. He was like, please don't kill me. Don't kill me. She was like, killing you would be the nicest thing I could do to you. And then she said to the room. <laughs> and then we just don't ever see him again. Uh, so the X-Men escape. Uh, they hop on the blackboard. Or Black the blackbird. Uh, towards New Mexico. Two seconds into the flight. Heading back towards New Mexico. Jean trans in, she transforms herself into like this new, darker, sleeker uniform. And then out of nowhere she says... I am fire and life incarnate. Now and forever, I am the phoenix. And then the issue ends. That was 134. 135, the blackbird is blown to pieces. <laughs> blown to pieces. Done. Col- <laughs> Colossus is now hurtling towards the ground. but he, Because he's just basically made of metal, unscathed. Uh, Nightcrawler teleports himself into a somewhat safe landing. Storm grabs Wolverine and flies safely down. Cyclops is falling uh, when he's just falling and now the Dark Phoenix is like flying towards him pretty fast. <laughs> and she's going to swoop down on him, but Storm comes in and uh, whisks him away. I like how the explosion just throws him out and not like yeah. explodes them. No. <laughs> it just forces them out. of. <laughs> Can't kill him. <laughs> Even though the Phoenix forces have blew up our ship. <laughs> <laughs> and so at this point they see that now they're dealing with the dark phoenix and they all try their best to attack her but it's basically just go fish try again you're not it's not working Jean, the dark phoenix says she's doing what she's doing right now trying to kill them because she wants to sever the last ties that she has to this team yeah so they all try to attack Jean gray doesn't work so you're trying to fight the wind yeah basically Everything they do doesn't work. So she she says uh, she's doing this to sever her last ties to the real world and the rest of her team. She wants no connection to any of them. That dark power is... (laughs) Then leave, bitch. You don't have to kill me. (laughs) If you stay alive, there's a chance that connection... (laughs) I'm just going to come back to you. I have to kill you. (laughs) There's a chance of reconnection. I can't let that happen. (laughs) So, uh, back at the party um, that just got uh, torn to pieces, the cops finally show up. And the cops are just immediately, they're like, hey, uh, this isn't for us. This isn't a fight for us. <laughs> they're like, you want like somebody to fix this, you got to call the Avengers, the Fantastic Four. This isn't a cop kind of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then seconds later, uh, across the street, uh, at Central Park, this large blast uh, just comes out of it. Just comes into the sky. It's huge, large blast, and then that's when everybody sees that the Dark Phoenix is now risen, and it's a big problem for everybody. The Fantastic Four registers the energy on the computers, so they're alerted of it. Of course, Spider-Man gets his tingle knowing that <laughs> something's going on. Uh, Doctor Strange feels that uh, great power is coming towards him. And the Silver Surfer senses that a spirit, not unlike his own, has just risen from Earth. Ooh. So they're kind of, it's kind of like the Korvac saga, too, where all of those same people <laughs> were alerted <laughs> of uh, this cosmic being all of a sudden coming into existence. Yeah, so months before all this, months ago when Jean first gained the Phoenix power, she still had love in her heart to control the power. And now that she doesn't, it's taking over completely. Uh, the Dark Phoenix is just flying through the cosmos at this point. 
she's consuming stars. She's blowing up uh, planets, destroying everything that she can, tearing apart ships, every destruction everywhere. She, in total, at I saw this at one point when I was reading this. In total, she killed five billion people. Damn. In seconds. There's nobody that can stop this. And that was 135. So 136, we start off uh, in the Shi'ar Empire. They're having an emergency meeting halfway across the galaxy to discuss the, the Phoenix situation that they now have on their hands. They say they've never seen power like this before. She's even stronger than Galactus because he needs just he needs planets to fulfill his hunger. In order to fulfill her hunger... Jean would need to consume the whole universe, which is going to cause a problem for everybody. Really trying to sever those ties. Yeah. <laughs> I need no connections <laughs> at all. None. So they just, the Shi'ar uh, Empire decides that they need to be the ones to stop her. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> uh, so back on Earth, the, the president is calling the Avengers for help, and, and there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> So, Gyrick was pretty spot on for saying that they shouldn't have this technology. And at this point, they got it back, and they're still not using it correctly. So, and what happened was, that originally, I, the president's like, we've been calling you guys for a while, trying to get you guys to help out, the Avengers. Jarvis is the one who answered the call. And the president's like, an Avenger is supposed to be the one to answer this call. Why are you answering He's like, oh, I'll get the team right on it. I'll get them on it. <laughs> and originally, Beast was the one who got the call saying that the NYPD needed help. And he was like, I don't know if I should get in the middle of this. So he just ignored it. <laughs> they called and he was like, this is a police issue. Please don't yeah. call this number again. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he only has $4. Because he doesn't do his job. So, <laughs> yeah, back at the... And then, so we got back to the, the school for gifted youngsters. And Beast is over there. <laughs> and he's working with Cyclops. And they're working on something to try to stop the Dark Phoenix. Uh, and then every issue that I've read of this story, Cyclops makes it a point to mention that he has special ruby quartz glasses. <laughs> every issue. <laughs> like you just want people to comment on it. Man, I, he's like, I'm... S- <laughs> At one point, uh, when him and Gene were on the rock making out, she took off his glasses. He's like, please don't take off my special ruby quartz glasses. It's not safe. I got them for eight ninety nine at the store, but uh, if you use my discount code, you can get 20% off these special ruby quartz glasses. Get, get my new ruby quartz glasses on Zenny. Hey, guys, don't throw water balloons. You're going to get my new ruby quartz glasses wet. All Every right? time, dude. Every issue. I was getting pissed. Like, okay, we get it. They're nice. <laughs> So we cut to a different city in New York where the Dark Phoenix has now arrived at her childhood home and her parents and her sister come out. She shows up in the middle of the night, but they, I mean, they haven't seen her for so long. They come out with excitement, but that excitement quickly turns dark and she tries to kill all three of them. (laughs) And so uh, the X-Men arrive outside of, outside of the house, minus Cyclops. And they try to jump her. It barely works. They they jump her and then they put like this brain scrambler on her. So she can't she can't form any coherent thoughts in her head. <laughs> but she's, I mean, she's a dark phoenix. She needs the universe to be satisfied. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she doesn't need much to stop you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. They put the brain scrambler on her to try to calm her down. She ends up freezing every X-Men just like a statue. They can still talk. But they're frozen in place. They can't move at all. She still has the brain scrambler on. <laughs> so Cyclops finally shows up and he says, Hey, I just want to talk. I know you're the Dark Phoenix right now, but I just want to talk. And she's she's not for it. <laughs> like, at all. She's like, there's no, this is not the time for talking, my guy. <laughs> like, at all. And she says, it's time to fight. So <laughs> she st- starts going at him crazy and he tries to he's like no i'm not fighting you. he's tries to convince her otherwise and it looks like he's getting through to her but then all of a sudden professor x shows up <laughs> just wheels in <laughs> hey guys what's going on <laughs> and he, he he hits gene with like this mind blast thinking that he's helping 
and it just makes her even more pissed off. <laughs> Cyclops was right there, and then <laughs> Professor X shows up and ruins it. So now she's exerting. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to kick me off the team? I'm going to save the day. <laughs> Gene, over here. Hey, Gene, check this out. <laughs> He's like, oh shit, that didn't work. That didn't work. <laughs> so now she's super pissed off. She's exerting more power than anyone has ever seen before. And Professor X is working to try to contain it, and somehow he does actually get it contained. She, after he does that, she collapses to the ground. Cyclops runs to pick her up, and she's back to being Jean Grey now. They're all happy. They go lucky, celebrating. And then out of nowhere, a big flash happens and they all just disappear. <laughs> so now we're at 137. The last issue, we see that they were teleported to uh, the Shi'ar ship of Lalandra. Le- and she tells them straight up, I got to kill the Phoenix. <laughs> That's why I brought you guys here. She killed a lot of my people. <laughs> I can't just let 5 billion people slide and say, oh, like you guys helped me before. <laughs> You guys saved my life before. It's just 5 billion people. She killed 5 billion people. She killed a star <laughs> and planets. I can't just let that go. Understandable. I, I have to do this. <laughs> and so Professor X is there, obviously. And then he challenges Lalandra to a duel of honor. And I don't know why he did this. Because <laughs> like he wasn't a part of any of this. <laughs> And he's in a floating wheelchair. What are you going to do? What are you fighting? <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm assuming that he did it to buy them some time. So she accepts and they set the battle for the next day. So it's it's basically going to be team versus team. Uh, the, the X-Men spend the rest of their night uh, training and relaxing for the battle tomorrow. Making sure that they're well rested. And then the next day, they're ready. Um, if the X-Men win the fight, whoever survives gets to leave. And if the Shi'ar win the fight, they take Jean and they kill her. I know I talked earlier about, like, imagining you're a goon and, like, you get trapped in, like, the astral plane. Yeah. But imagine you you wake up as an X-Men. Mm-hmm. Your friend is going insane, flying She's through the cosmos, destroying planets, yeah. stars, everything. Mm-hmm. And then you guys save her, get abducted by aliens. And then now you have to fight for your life and yeah. your friend's life mm-hmm. in space. Yeah. And now you just got to go to bed and just <laughs> be yeah. rested and, and ready in the morning. Im- imagine that being your girlfriend. Oh, man, I love you so much. Like, I'm so glad things have been getting better lately. And then she just loses it. And then you find her. You, you're you this close to saving her. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> your dad comes in and just... <laughs> shoots her pisses her off even more she goes off the rails and then yeah you guys get teleported to some alien place that you've never even seen before and then they're like well now that she's here i'm gonna kill her (laughs) and the only way that you're gonna save her is if you guys all fight for your life i mean in five billion people she killed five billion people i mean at that point like (laughs) there's not really you did the okay so here's here's the thing right (laughs) They, Lalandra said they killed five billion people. Okay, where's your proof? <laughs> like, <laughs> I understand that that's what you're saying, and I have no reason to believe that you're lying to me. But also, like, yeah, I guess we would need a, a trial. Yeah. We need, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what, like, that's what Cyclops and and Beast are saying. They're like, well, I get what you're saying, but put her on trial, something like that. But what's a reasonable amount of people for her to kill to where it's not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not like mass genocide. But I like I get that part of it, but like the the X Men didn't see any of it. So it's like put her, put her on trial. But the, and they're like, Why did he why did Professor X throw us into a fight when we could have <laughs> Hey, my team versus yours. We're gonna kick your ass. It's like <laughs> shirt skin. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, team, show them what you got. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, he's real good at, like, throwing other people under the bus to, like, yeah. fight his battles. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, uh, the fight is going to take place on the moon in this big vacuum bubble-type area on the moon. 
And then as soon as they get into the battlefield, Angel is there, and he forgets that gravity is a thing, and starts flapping his wings to try to get a better vantage point of the other team, and flaps too hard, and it pushes him <laughs> too far, and it <laughs> he goes through the hole of the vacuum and gets sucked into actual space, and he can't breathe out there. So <laughs> he's up there for like two seconds and immediately comes crashing down. Storm has to go save him from crashing and dying. And then Cyclops is like, come on, man. Like we, have, like, we already have enough shit on our plates for one of our teammates to just take himself out. He's like, use your head. You have a brain. Think. He's just like, holy fuck. <laughs> Cyclops is like, my girl is possibly going to die because I don't I like, we don't know if we're going to make it through this fight. <laughs> Yeah, he Angel almost immediately kills himself. The battle starts. Both teams just it's a, a back and forth thing. One team gets the upper hand, the other team does back and forth. Uh, but the the X Men slowly start falling one by one. Uh, Gene and Cyclops end up being the last one standing, uh, but that doesn't last very long. Gene says, "You know what? F it." Flames the Phoenix back on. At this point, she thought she was saved. Like, she thought Professor X actually was able to separate the two. She's like, well, we can't win this fight unless I turn the Phoenix back on. She says, fuck it, let's do it. Flames back on, and now this whole thing just goes completely sideways. Because now Cyclops isn't sure if he can trust this whole thing. So now it's <laughs> now it's the Shi'ar team, the X-Men, against the phoenix <laughs> professor x finally like chimes in through his telepathy and he's like you guys need to kill her now everybody needs to do what they can to kill her they're finally able to stop her and then gene kind of breaks through again and says that the only way for the phoenix to survive is with gene and the only way for gene to survive is with the phoenix so there's only one way for you guys to get rid of the phoenix. You guys have to kill her. And she's like, I'm not going to wait for one of you guys to kill me. Explodes. Explodes herself. Just completely turns to literal ash on the ground in front of Cyclops. Well, hadn't she died before? She had. She died before, and then the second time she died, she didn't actually die because the phoenix force kept her alive. Oh. But because Professor X now thought that she... He, that he had separated the two. Just the fact that she was able to immediately just grab that power again and bring it back. She knew that there's no... There's no just Gene or just the Phoenix Force. Mm. So she used the Phoenix... She used the Phoenix Force on this time to actually just end it all. So now there's no... Either one Cyclops is in shambles. And then that was it. Interesting. Yeah. I gotta be honest. I don't. I didn't. I don't think I watched the movies. I think from all the hype and like reading about the story over the years mm. and how this and that. Like, I don't know. Maybe I have to read it myself. But like, I didn't really see it as like towards the end and you know the last four issues or something. Mm. Those were like where everything kind of picked up. But yeah. like, I don't know. Everything else before that was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah. When you're reading it, it's a, it's a good build up. Mm -hmm. To see that she's slowly, like, getting darker. And just, like, the gene that they all know and love is slowly just disappearing in front of their eyes. Mm. So, like, it was a cool build. I liked it. But, yeah, the action really starts in those last, like, probably two or three issues. But I, I didn't feel, like, it was nine nine issues or something like that. I, I didn't feel like it was too long. Mm. I thought it was, like, when you read through it, it's, like, the... The perfect length. The hard part sometimes when we do these is that it takes so long. Like, nine issues doesn't seem like it's that long to read. And it's not if you're just reading it. But when you have to, like, take notes on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, damn, nine issues? Did I really need <laughs> nine issues of that? And sometimes I can't tell if it's the fact that it's taking me so long that I don't think it should have been nine <laughs> issues. Or if it really just didn't need to be nine. Uh, besides that point, I liked it. I really liked it. It was, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was, I felt like it was like the perfect length of a build and it actually 
led to something. The second season that we've done so far has been like perfect so far. Like it's, everything has been like a a good story. It's like let like the build up has been a decent size. Mm. We haven't dealt with like a lot of filler on a lot of things. It's been good. For me, Webhead's stamp of approval. Another house down. <laughs> uh, I guess since we only have the two, I would go with the stamp of approval. I wouldn't say it's a dud. Um, I definitely did like the, the last bit of it. Yeah. So I had to give it a stamp of approval. <laughs> this week, that was a gene flying through houses <laughs> and destroying people. <laughs> that was gene blowing up planets just because she felt like it. And she, that was the crazy part. She, she felt good destroying the planets when she flew through the the star mm. and destroyed it she said that was the best that she's ever felt that's nuts that's insane yeah they, i the i really liked the, the way it was written just to have the this is yeah this it's making the show a lot more fun when these stories are <laughs> when they're actually good yeah <laughs> yeah next week we got a we got another x-men story we went from having no x-men story to two weeks in a row two X Men stories. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Yeah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I got to change that one out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the Dark Phoenix saga. Our first, like I said, our first X Men story. Not going to be the last. Probably not the last time we see the Phoenix. Definitely not. But it, I don't know if it'll be for a, a bit before she comes back up. Thanks for joining us this week. It's been a fun one. I know some of these stories can get a little long. I mean, what are we gonna do? We get we get, <laughs> like I said last week. We're giving you guys the TLDR. Uh, like Mark didn't know. <laughs> Marco didn't know what that was at all. Maybe some of you guys didn't know. For all I know, probably. If I'm if I can't be the only one, you, that's all I'm saying. The chances of you being the only one are slim, but it's not. <laughs> it's not impossible. Yeah. <laughs> so we will see you guys next we'll, I always say that. We'll see you guys next week. You guys aren't seeing me. You'll know that. I have somebody has been standing in that bush for a couple of <laughs> 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 For the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, it's a dead body. Oh. We should get that <laughs> checked out. Alright, guys. We will be back next week with Days of the Future Past. Mm-hmm. Another X-Men story. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Peace.